Hey there, Powder Keg. He's Mr. Ooh La La. I'm Brian Zane, and this is the Pow Pro Wrestling Feast Your Eyes Countdown Special. Mr. We are still reeling from the uh, what the aftermath of Bumps in the Night 3D, our five-year anniversary show, our first experience going live on our YouTube channel, Mr. It was a very successful night for us. Great numbers from, and great feedback as well from that first live stream, and we're very excited to be hosting it once again Saturday November 16th from downtown Eugene at World Pies. Folks, if you can't be there live, then you gotta watch us live on the YouTube channel. It's gonna be a huge night. Bumps in the Night was only the beginning of the new era here in Power Pro Wrestling, and we plan to continue with a cornucopia, a smorgasbord of excitement on November 16th with Feast Your Eyes, huh? That's right. Who can forget the main event from Bumps in the Night, that three-on-two barbed wire cage match when Most Violent got their revenge against Marcus, Eriks, and the rest of Despicable Me. And speaking of that trio, Eliza True going on her own this Saturday night in singles competition, going against a returning La Bruja, Abigail Warren. This rivalry goes back a few months, mister. It all began over some school spirit. Eliza True has had quite the year since debuting in Pal Pro Wrestling last October, from learning under the wing of Kikyo to helping Marcus Eriks destroy the nuptials of Funny Bone. But perhaps her boldest move came at altered egos when she targeted the wickedest woman in all of Pal, La Bruja Abigail Warren. Laying low in the school spirit battle royal, True picked her spot attacking La Bruja, the presumed winner, with her baseball bat and stealing victory from the jaws of defeat. But Warren is not one to be thwarted so easily and has vowed revenge. Will the truth hurt for Abigail or will Eliza fall under La Bruja's wicked spell? Catch Pal Pro Wrestling's Feast Your Eyes on Saturday, November 16th, live at World Pies in Eugene to see for yourself. No, 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 see, we're not about that. You know, pal, I may have had to take a couple months off, but Eliza, I don't want you to think that I haven't been watching. You know what started off, I had a lot of respect for you. Young up and coming woman in this business, you were putting in the grind. But frankly, lately I don't like what I see. Some of you might not have saw it earlier. We had ourselves a little battle royal. Things were all good and dandy. You wanna come in here and give me a cheap shot like that? You wanna come back out here and give him a cheap shot like that? Yeah. Yeah. Now I see a problem that I gotta handle my way. So next time, La Bruja Abigail Warren is in Pal Pro Wrestling. I want Eliza True one on one. And if you think that Abigail Warren isn't going to whoop your ass up and down Eugene Oregon, then not only are you great, you must be stupid! Warren, you call yourself the Bruja, or the Witch, whatever that's supposed to mean. You know what you remind me of? You remind me of those sad little goth girls that just sit on the steps all by themselves at school. Speaking of school, I showed that I had the most school spirit by representing Oregon Pro Wrestling in the School Spirit Battle Royal, dunking you, proving Oregon Pro Wrestling is the best in the West Coast, not the Ugly Dojo. And the next time that I see you at World Pies, I'm gonna make sure that you get expelled from POW Pro Wrestling because the truth hurts. Well, you heard from the two competitors there. Mister, I'm uh, kind of a loss as to who I think could win this matchup. To me, it's kind of a toss-up. Eliza True, she has gained a lot of experience working with Dr. Cleaver and Marcus Eriks. She really showed her toughness in spite of the defeat at the hands of most violence. So going against a far more experienced La Bruja Abigail Warren, I think the uh, odds are pretty even for me, mister. Well, Eliza True has been through the meat grinder. And what about at the end of that cage match? Marcus X, Dr. Cleaver reaching out for Eliza True. She walked away from them. Is she even still part of Despicable Me? We don't know. But she has survived Funny Bone. She has survived Rexhale. And now she's against Abigail Warren, who tried to return, swoop in, recapture the hearts of the powder cake. But no, Eliza True with the kidney shot with the bat, jumping her over the top rope. I think 
Eliza True has been in it. She's been in the, the battles here at PAL. What has Abigail Warren been doing? Uh, training at the Ugly Dojo. Eliza True has had real life experience with the pain, with the steel. I think she will prove that the truth hurts and she will send Abigail Warren back packing where she belongs. Huh? Someone still seems to be a bit touchy about uh, the former observatee or conservatee leaving the conservator. Well, folks, moving on to some tag team news here at Pal Pro Wrestling. You might have seen this happen in our five-year anniversary show. The Hammer Brothers chasing the Hess Clan away in a quest to try and get their shot, another shot at the tag team championships. But in doing so, they found the vacancy, they squashed the vacancy, and then moments later, they were attacked by these two mysterious men in jumpsuits. Look at this footage here, mister. You see these two guys in these dark jumpsuits, their faces covered in coal as they are brutalized the former tag team champions. We now know that these are known as the Cole Cousins. But mister, I gotta wonder, it, it seems like a bit of a, uh, almost a tribute it would seem to the Hammer Brothers, but do you think it's more than that? Do you think there's something there lying under the surface? Is there more to this than we know? Who's to know? It could be mind games. It could be the first little kernel of truth that we're going to find out more about these Cole Cousins. But one thing is to be sure, as much as I dislike the Hammer Brothers, you have to respect their tenacity, their steely determination to get what they want here in PAL. And I don't think they're going to take this attack laying down. I think if they see those cold cousins in the midst here at Feast Your Eyes, the Hammer Brothers are going to come out, confront them, and find out why. They attacked a jerk in sludge last month, huh? Well, folks, staying with tag team news here at PAL, speaking of those new tag team champions, the Hesses, mister, they're going to have their hands full all weekend long. Now, if they can survive and retain the titles on Friday and Kaiser against the Penthouse Players Click, well, then their reign could explode at the hands of C4, the duo of Guillermo Rosas and Cody Chun. They have been looking for tag team gold here at PAL for well over two years, but have slipped through the cracks every single time. Mr. This could be their last chance. You bring up C4, but you forget to mention there's only two, Guillermo Rosas, Cody Chan. Meanwhile, with the Hedge Clan, there is trois. We have Wade, Dom, Uncle Sid, who was pivotal on them, not only winning those titles in Kaiser at Wikigon, but retaining them against Tweedledee and Tweedledub that at Bumps in the Night 3D, eh? Now, certainly it's gonna be, like I said, a busy time for the champions. We got some pre-match comments from them. Let's hear it right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we told you all, we told you all that the Hess Clan was gonna be the brand new POW Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions. <laughs> and we did it. We beat the Hammer Brothers once and for all. <laughs> Thanks to my my brother from another mother. Thanks to your Uncle Sid. <laughs> yeah! and, now, and now we move on to protect our brand new buckles in Kaiser, Oregon against them penthouse players. Boys, you're stepping in to the home field of the Hess Clan in Kaiser, Oregon, daddy. <laughs> and you ain't gonna like what you find in them stables, boys. No! And we're gonna come back. We're gonna come back right here to Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> and you think you're gonna set on some sort of bomb? You think you're gonna blow up the Hess Clan Tag Team Championships no. with this group they call C4? I know you, C4, but boys, you ain't never seen nothing like the Hess Clan. <laughs> well, mister, you mentioned before about Dove and Dangerous. Well, they are the next duo in the crosshairs of Jonas Albert Robinson and his Jarmy. Ever since he lost the commissionership to yours truly, we know that Jonas has been on the warpath trying to get revenge on the people in the team that beat him and the rest of his little goof troop. So this Saturday night in Eugene, Oregon, Dove and Dangerous will be taking on Joey Thornton and Jeremy Blanchard in tag team action. And mister, here's something else I know you're very invested in and very interested in the outcome. This upcoming trios matchup as the Flame and Aces 2.0 have been challenged by your man, Charlie Avell and his new group, The Dynasty. 
Zay Perez had the most beautiful man in POW right where he wanted him, defeating Charlie Avell at Savage Streets back in August. But it was Avell's poor sportsmanship after the bell that drew the ire of Perez's friend, the honorary ace Caleb Tennedy. At Altered Egos, Tennedy found himself handcuffed to Avell's manager, Mr. Ula La, to prevent interference. But when the referee met some friendly fire, it was Tennedy who wanted the playboy to bend the rules. After this attempt at interference backfired, we saw the debut of Charlie Charlie's personal security team, Los Sicarios, Subalvaro, and Damon Boyd, forming the group now known as Dynasty. This new trio has laid down the gauntlet to Perez, Kennedy, and Kane Jaden for a trios match. But with Jaden's emotional state uncertain after losing his superhero identity, can the Flame and Aces overcome the odds put forth by the Dynasty? Man, I don't know. I don't know if the people of power are gonna believe in me anymore. I don't know if my friends can depend on me anymore. I don't even know if I believe in myself at this point. This is hard. This is really hard. I put a lot of effort into becoming a hero, but not only just a hero, a symbol of hope for children, adults, myself, my daughter. Without the mask, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like me. In a lot of ways, I feel like that mask and me are one. And it's causing a lot of confusion up here and in here. I don't know what I gotta do, but I gotta dig deep. Because I'm no longer the unbelievable. I am no longer the savior of Rose City. I am just a man. I am just Kane, Jaden. And I don't really know what that means. Four years I've spent grinding suit after suit, mask after mask, to give these people something to believe in. And now, I just don't know if I have it in me. Oh, look at those aces pretending that they're so united, so together, while they are falling apart. Caleb Kennedy and Zay Perez have not gotten along for months because Caleb Tennant, he is so hot-tempered that Zay Perez is so meek. And now, Kane Jadon, he's putting on a happy face in his promo pics, but he's lost everything. Now, since maybe he's no longer a superhero, he can become like a professional ar arbitrator, a professional negotiator, a counselor, perhaps, bring the aces back together. But it's not matter because the dynasty, my new dynasty of the most beautiful man, Charlie Avell and Sicarios, we are together, we are congealed into one unit, and we will crush the aces and Kane and Jaden forever. Well, the super aces do to be, appear to be at a crossroads now. It's hard to forget what happened last month at Bumps in the Night, that YouTube championship match where Jaden's superhero identity was also on the line. And you know, I stepped in because I felt I had to do what was right and take that steel chair away from Levi Shapiro. and. In the end, How'd that you know, work for you, huh? Yeah, a bit of a miscommunication you and broke the heart of millions of children all over on YouTube. Hey, there. I didn't do it. It was Levi Shapiro. He's the one who got everything to where it is now. And yes, I know that me getting involved in the apron might have stymied things for Jaden, and I apologize to him profusely. And it's something that I have to live with, certainly. Jaden is no longer the superhero, he's no longer the unbelievable. He's nothing. No, he's not nothing. He's still something because the powder keg sees something in him, whether or not he has the mask. But speaking of Levi Shapiro, he is going to be defending the YouTube Championship this Saturday night in Eugene, Oregon. As far as I understand, he has uh, declared he has a hand-picked challenger in store. And uh, he also sent us a video message to tell us just who that's going to be. I can't wait to see who it's going to be. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, in television land, YouTube land specifically, is I, the wrestling with regret YouTube champion, Levi Shapiro, with my opponent for November, but we will touch on that in just one moment. You see, as I enjoyed some nice dinner here at the Cracker Barrel, I've decided that next month, it's going to be me who chooses my opponent, and after the months of Brian Zane and Pow Pro Wrestling being a thorn in my side, I've defeated Jaden, and I've defeated anybody you put in front of me. So that is why next month I have decided to bring up my star group, Crazy Cage, Jack Jr. Hey.
Levi Shapiro, Soul Gator Man, Crazy Cajun, Jai Jewel. This one thing Jai Jewel definitely does know. Jai Jewel's shoulders don't come off that mat, regardless of whether it's low tide or high tide. Baby. They stay nice, thick, and sun. See ya. Well, I will say that Levi Shapiro is certain to retain that YouTube championship. I guarantee it. <laughs> but I see you have ensured that in December, Levi Shapiro will not have a handpicked challenger because you have arranged this wicked, this nefarious six pack challenge between six top contenders from the West Coast. And the winner will get a shot at the Red with the Red YouTube Championship. That's right, my brand again, Malcolm Flex. Newcomers, Miko, Alana, and Jay Maney. Rounding out the group, Mickey Mantoya and Ravenous Randy Myers. They will all have a shot at challenging whoever the YouTube Champion is by our December show. Well, folks, as we wrap up this countdown show for Feast Your Eyes, we cannot forget about our big main event. Now, of course, Amira, the Tower of Power. She had a dominant victory over the aforementioned Matt Brannigan in that Iron Man match, the Bangers Brawl, as it were. And of course, she's got a very busy weekend. Should she survive the challenge of Randy Myers in Kaiser on Friday, she is going to be taking on, in a rematch, the international standout, Sandra Moon. It's been a long, hard road for the Tower of Power, Amira, since she last faced Sandra Moon at Bumps in the Night Part 2 over one year ago. But that hard road has forged Amira into the tough-as-nails competitor she is today, standing tall with the PAL Pro Wrestling Championship. Now Amira meets another roadblock as the subspace sweetheart returns to PAL with the blue and gold in her sights. These two competitors, both on the verge of becoming international sensations, meet again with more than pride on the line. Prepare to feast your eyes as Amira defends the POW Championship against Sandra Moon and Eugene on Saturday, November 16th. It's the season of the squirrel at POW Pro Wrestling and I am showing everybody just why I am your POW Pro Wrestling Champion. I showed Matt Brannigan, I showed that I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I no, no bounds when it comes to keeping this title. Sandra Moon, it's been one whole year since we faced off. A lot has changed for me, and I know a lot has changed for you. November 16th, feast your eyes. Lightning in a bottle meets the Tower of Power. I'm gonna show you one more time. Just why I am gonna take home the gold. Well, mister, this is a rematch a year in the making. It was last October that Amira took on Sandra Moon and uh, she came out on top in that one. But now the stakes are even higher. It's for the PAL Pro Wrestling Championship. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Who do you have for this one? Well, Amira has certainly raised her stock in the last year since she last met Sandra Moon. She's been traveling all over the country. But Sandra Moon is now a citizen of the world. A citizen of the world. She's been on many tours of Japan, wrestling all over the US, all over the world. And I think that that worldly experience of Sandra Moon is going to make all of the difference. She's going to put Amira back in her place, huh? All right, well, it, anything could happen. It's for the PAL Pro Wrestling Championship. And we are so excited to be bringing this event to you live Saturday, November 16th. It's Feast Your Eyes from World Pies in downtown Eugene. Like we said, you're gonna see Amira defend the PAL title against Sandra Moon. You're gonna see the six pack challenge for the YouTube Championship number one contender spot and of course you're going to see Levi Shapiro defend the YouTube title against Jaya Jewel. The trios match as the Super Aces 2.0 take on Dynasty. Dove and Dangerous battles the Jarmy. The Hess Clan defend the tag titles against C4. Then you've got Eliza True and Abigail Warren in a grudge match. And if you can't be there for it in person, Mr. Fans Know Where to Go, live right here on the YouTube channel, live starting at 7 o'clock Pacific Time. And don't forget those super chats. I need my nice cold bottle of Chardonnay to enjoy after the show in my penthouse suite, huh? Not the penthouse suite that Naja and Chris Brady hang out with, I'll have you know. Right, the one next to, and maybe a few floors below the penthouse suite um, that Brady and Naja go on. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching our countdown show. We can't wait to give you all the action that's coming your way with Pal Pro Wrestling. Feast your eyes. For Mr. Ooh La La, I'm Brian Zane, and we'll see you next time.